A study in September 2022 found that there was $6.3 trillion held in 401ks across the United States. But what was more interesting is that in that study, over 63% of people who were surveyed didn't understand what their 401k was or they didn't understand the terminology of the different things inside their 401k. So we felt like it would be really important to take some time um, to cover that today on Talking Sense. So before we get started, I wanted to say thank you to Chad Roller, my partner in crime in Conway, um, for coming up today and helping me with this episode. I know we've dealt with a lot of clients who have 401ks and a lot of them who have confusion about what their 401k does, is, and all the, the stuff that's inside that summary plan document. Yeah, so I think it's first off, we just need to define what it is, right? Mm-hmm. What is a 401k? Um, and we use 401k kind of like the Uber word yes. for a lot of things, for a lot of retirement plans. Yes. But today we're going to talk specifically about what is the 401k. So it's that mm-hmm. company-sponsored employer plan uh, that you have access to. And Teresa, most of the time it's I get a packet, they hand it to you, and here you go. And usually that packet comes from HR. So it's not a financial advisor who's handing you that packet and explaining to you what's in there. It's the HR manager who literally just says, here, get this back to me in X number of days, and we'll go from there. So to simplify it, let's just break it down as to what just the basic fundamentals of it. So employer plan, which we've already said. Right, which what means are those features? that it's an employer-sponsored plan, mm-hmm. and most of the time they're going to offer a match. So if I make a contribution to my 401k, then majority of the time, mm-hmm. most of the time, there's going to be an employer match for me also making that contribution. And it's important to understand that because for a lot of people, they'll they'll think that, you know, well, if, what's the point? We're going to talk about some of those pitfalls here in a minute. But if you understand what the match does for you and how it works, it may help motivate you to get started or to keep that fire going for your financial journey. So let's start with, you know, what are some of those pitfalls to avoid? Because we've we've heard a lot of things in the meeting room that people go, well, pfft, I don't I don't see the point in doing it now because of blank. Yeah. So so at the basis is I'm making a contribution. So I'm Mm -hmm. deferring some of my income, Mm -hmm. income that I made, but I'm going to defer that into this retirement account and receive a portion of that is going to be a match. Right. So if I'm deferring a portion of my income, then obviously I'm not taking home as much of that income that I've I've typically been doing if I'm not been using the 401k. Mm -hmm. So Our first pitfall is why start now? I've got plenty of time. I'm just right out of college or Mm -hmm. I'm a couple years into my job and now I'm uh, able to contribute to this plan. Why, Why do I need to start now? I think a lot of people discount the importance of starting early. And if you're watching this on YouTube, we have a graphic that's going to kind of give you some details on the impact of starting early. But if you're not able to see that, we're just going to kind of give you an idea of what that means. So there's this thing called compound interest. It's a fancy little, we hate the words that we use in our industry, but jargon. But what it allows you to do by starting early is you don't need to put as much back to get to the same goal. So for instance, if I have a goal that is five years out and I'm going to put towards that, there's a certain dollar amount I need to, to set aside. If that goal is 10 years out or 20 years out, then the amount that I need to put aside to reach it is lower. So by starting early, you're going to have a bigger pool at the end. Also, life is going to happen. So if you start early and you get in the habit of saving early, chances are you're going to stick it out for the long run as opposed to waiting because there's always going to be another reason not to start. Yeah, I think it's that discipline and getting started earlier is is creating that habit. That's the that's mm-hmm. the number one. Just get started some way, somehow. And number yep. two, so I'm I've getting started and I'm just going to get the full match. That's all I'm going to do. Is that enough? Mm-hmm. Well, in most cases, the math would tell us no, unless you're really, really, really young. <laughs> chances are, if you're my age, for sure, just getting the match is probably not going to be enough. And, and and sometimes the match isn't that great. Yeah. So let's let's talk about maybe an average match. Was mm-hmm. it typically what we see four to six percent? Yes. As low as we've seen one. I've, there's one that has a yeah. half a percent. Yeah. It's insanely yeah. low. And we've probably seen as high as 10. Mm, yes. Here times. locally, there are a couple of providers that have a 10 percent match, which is fantastic. Yeah. So on an individual basis, though, you still got a lot of money that you can put in no matter what that match is. So in 2023, uh, a individual under age 20, age 50, age 20, <laughs> age 50 
you can put in 22,500. That's yes. a, a 20 was coming into my mind mm-hmm. right there. So 22,500 for your annual contributions for you as the mm-hmm. employer. The match is not counted in that. Correct. So there's a, a lot of wiggle room in that to be able to light fire to your goals there. Um, but it, some people also will say, you know, well, that's just a nebulous decision maker. If you just say, well, I'm getting the match, so that's enough. You don't know what your aim is in that. You don't have a definitive number. You don't have a plan. You're just kind of throwing money at it. Yes. So, so defining that's important. Yeah, if you're only getting a 4% match and I'm only doing 4%, that's probably way away from the max that you can probably put in mm-hmm. at 22.5. And then if you're over 50, then you got the catch up of the 7,500 yes. in 2023. So, and those numbers inflate most mm-hmm. often, sometimes yearly. Uh, they will they will inflate over time. But the, thir- the third one is, time's up, I'm done, I'm going to cruise from here. I think some people get to a certain age or certain balance in that account, and they go, okay, I'm good. But again, that's back to that nebulousness. If you don't know where you're going, then how do you know when you're arriving? So if you don't have a definitive plan, don't fall into that trap of believing that you're there, you're good to go, because you don't have those that data to back up where you are. And these last two are kind of go hand in hand, but we'll hit the mm-hmm. first one. So what's hot, what's not, I need to know now. The old water cooler investment advice. Yes, everybody gets together. Everybody's talking about where their balance is. And then you start getting that, well, wait, should I be doing what he's doing? Should I be doing what they're doing? The fear of missing out. Yes, yes. And I think that that's not a great way to invest. That's not a strategy to try to yeah. mimic what someone else is doing because they're in different life stages or they have different goals possibly. Absolutely. So... The fifth one ties in, the market is in trouble. I want to protect what Mm -hmm. I have put in. So it's all of a sudden, now I'm reactive to what the market has done over the last eight months, maybe 12 months. And now I'm going to base my future plan off of what the market just did. Yes, that's trying to live your future looking through the rearview mirror. You you just can't do that. I think we've seen people, and it, it tends to happen that if you got out at the wrong time, Chances are you're going to get back in at the wrong time, too, which is why we coach people not to let market volatility be the decider in your investment strategy. You've got to have the strategy first, the plan first, and then align the investments with that. But it's also good to take a, take a look at what those funds inside that plan has done in the past, too. Mm-hmm. It certainly gives you some indication. Exactly, exactly. But maybe don't look at like the one year or the five year. Look at those long term asset categories to really understand where it's likely to go but again we can't promise future performance based off of past performance right right but you can also kind of create some expectations for the volatility that you may be investing in so you know hey if i'm seeking this higher return and i see the volatility maybe over the last 10 years what this fund has done you'll know okay this is just the normal volatility for this particular fund that i've chosen Yes. So we've talked through a few of the pitfalls that people tend to fall into. Let's talk about some of those pieces that people need to really understand. So pricing. When you're dealing with a 401k, the the provider is going to give you some information on the pricing. Typically, the employer is going to carry the bulk of the burden when it comes to the cost of investing. But those documents are kind of lengthy and hard to understand sometimes. They're written by lawyers, not human beings. Um, who have like normal speech patterns. Um, So it's important to understand those fees in the plan so that you understand the impact on your performance. Yeah, and there's also some options in within 401ks to get some investment advice too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it may be that you want some to pay additional fees for that investment advice inside that particular plan or go to a financial advisor and ask them to help you kind of guide you with that portfolio. And I know it's something that we've done Yes. Uh, often with our clients is to not only manage the assets that we have uh, here in-house, but also through their 401k plan, because that needs to tie into the whole plan overall, what they're doing. Yes. And we've seen that before where someone has great diversification in some of their assets, but then maybe the employer plan is 80% their company stock, which can be a risk. Uh, you know, you can be too saturated in something. So it is a good point to make there, Chad, that you have to make sure that all of your investments are singing together in harmony. Yeah. So the second one here is, is probably the, to me, number one. It's a gem. Yeah. The Roth flexibility. Mm-hmm. A lot of 401ks, especially nowadays, offer a Roth option. And it's as you go through your career, hopefully your income is increasing. And we've had a lot of clients who recently have 
gotten to where they make too much to make Roth contributions into a Roth IRA, but they do have the ability to use that employer plan to build those Roth assets for later. And if you hear this word Roth and you go, what is that? We've got an episode. You can go, uh, we'll make sure to link it in the, the notes here, but um, about what Roth versus traditional is, we'll, we'll, we can get you that video link in the show notes. Yes. And if you're a higher income earner, this is where you need to go. If you don't listen to anything mm-hmm. else within this podcast, go after your Roth within your 401k because it could be a great tool for you as a high income earner. And of course, talk to your CPA about the impacts because when you're doing the Roth option, you're putting in after tax dollars. So you want to make sure you understand what that's going to do to your tax situation. Um, Another thing to consider and understand is does it fit your long term goals? So there are a lot of target date funds in employer plans. They're usually very cost effective. So a lot of employers use them. And it's a good way for people who maybe aren't well-versed in investing to feel confident that they've got diversification. But there are some drawbacks to that. There are. There are some drawbacks, but let's let's understand why they created those. Mm-hmm. They created those because they were giving people just tons of mutual fund options mm-hmm. and they just didn't know what to pick for their time horizon till retirement, their age, their risk tolerance and everything. So these life cycle funds or, or target date funds kind of came into play to help people as a guide path so mm-hmm. they are uh, they are a tool to use. They're there to use. But I think you have to still be very strategic instead of just saying, hey, I'm going to pick this one. Yes. And I think what we tend to tell people is don't try to match up your retirement year. Push that out, because what happens is as it nears the, the date that is the target, the fund becomes much more conservative very quickly. So you want to make sure that the portfolio that you're using matches your goals, regardless of what the date ends up being on that. Another thing to understand is your life cycle investment risks. So when you're 15 years or less from retirement, we talked about this with that target date again, the amount of bond exposure drastically increases. And it usually ends up being almost like a, it ends up being a 60-40 split by that target date, typically. Some of them are even more conservative. But what we have found with our planning process is that 60-40 blend tends to not really be where you need to be at retirement. Yeah. And the last here, plan rollover miscues. So there are a lot of options that you have, you know, within the plan, but then also how do you use this as a tool to go into retirement? So Mm -hmm. there's four things that basically you can do at retirement or before retirement with your actual plan. Yes. So you can leave it there. In some cases, your employer plan may be very easy to manage online. They may have a lot of great tools for you there. Often they tend to be pretty limited. You can certainly roll it over to a new plan if you're not retiring, but you're just switching in employers. One thing to be aware of is the vesting schedule in that. If you're considering a new job, there's going to be a vesting schedule on the plan you currently have. So make sure you understand that before you make that decision because it could affect what your rollover is. You can roll it to an IRA if you'd like to be able to manage it outside of that employer plan when you've switched jobs. Or you can cash it out. And I'm going to say right now, please, for the love of Pete, don't do that. Okay. Uh, You're going to be taxed if you're under 59 and a half you're going to hit a penalty on that so yes you can do it but just because you can do something doesn't always mean that it's in your best interest so uh, that's kind of the basics there we've got ultimately we would always encourage you to talk to your advisor to help you make those decisions it is time for our two cents but before we even get into that i always like to kind of throw scott under the bus a little bit Um, we were talking about how sometimes people don't understand terminology in their plans I don't know if you remember this story, but Scott shared when he got his first 401k, he was so excited about his selection of investment because it said high yield in the name. And he thought everybody wants high yield. What he didn't realize is that's jargon for bonds. And he was in his 20s. So it wasn't exactly the best fit. So that's why we think it's really important to understand that plan. You don't want to be like Scott and end up in a a bond fund for several years when you're getting started. All right, Chad. So it's time for our two cents. I'll let you go first. Well, I don't know who Pete is, but I love him too. Well, thank you. But, you know, (laughs) hey, I think the biggest thing is to know that this is a very powerful tool for Mm -hmm. your retirement. You know, there's a lot, a lot of pensions left out there. So this is a very, uh, it's, it's it's a great tool to save for your retirement and getting that match. But there are a lot of options. So mm-hmm. just reach out to an advisor. Make sure that you're making educated decisions and know why you're doing what you're doing. Yes. And I think also I want to make sure, you know, this whole process can be overwhelming. I think financial independence in general feels nebulous for a lot of people. So what we've done is we've created some free resources for people. So if you're at that point where you're like, yeah, I'd love to make progress, but I feel just overwhelmed. I'd encourage you to reach out. Um, you can go to our website, which is getreadyforthefuture.com slash keys 
or you can text the word keys to 501-381-5228 to get a free copy of the six keys to financial independence. This will just kind of give you an idea of where to start. Um, That's all we've got this week for Talking Sense. We hope you learned something that you can take into your financial journey to be successful. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening to Talking Sense. And if you like what you hear, make sure and subscribe to the podcast to get all the newest episodes. The Jim Wolf team is available to you 24-7 at info at getreadyforthefuture.com or by calling our offices at 866-653-PLAN. That's 866-653-7526. And while we like to have fun here, we're also financial advisors, and that means disclosures. You should personally consult a financial advisor before making any investment, and no strategy can assure success. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice offered through Independent Advisor Alliance. Independent Advisor Alliance and Jimwell Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial.